Animating in Blender is difficult, with endless tutorials, an exponential learning curve, and maybe the most confusing UI ever. It's easy to see why animation is difficult, but what if this changed? For the past two years, Blender has been cooking on a massive upgrade project called Animation 2025. They showed us an incredible new animation system with one ultimate goal, and that was to empower animators to keep animating for the next decade. It's been two years and we have some amazing new updates to talk about, like massive quality of life changes, incredible new tools, and a secret animation project that's going to change the way you and I animate forever. So let's break these down one at a time. Building an entirely new animation system from scratch is difficult, especially with such a small dev team. But after two short years of development, there's already been amazing progress on this project and a ton of new features for us to play with. For example, the graph editor is now way faster. We have a completely revamped bone system and a whole new suite of tools for the graph editor. These are great and I covered them in last year's video, but this doesn't really change how we animate. These are just small pieces of an overall massive pie which is Project Animation 2025. And there's a ton of stuff jam-packed into this thing. Like rigging nodes. This is a completely new system for creating armatures and animation rigs. So instead of building a rig from scratch, imagine having a set of nodes that lets you build out a procedural custom rig that essentially works on any character or object that you needed. This would save an unfathomable amount of time. Not only that, but this would allow us to have slappable rigs or presets, literally dragging and dropping preset rigs onto anything. Another system they want to implement is the bone picker. This is an animator's best friend, and I'm kind of surprised this isn't already in the vanilla build of Blender. It's a super functional UI feature that allows you to pick bones. So instead of looking at this mess and trying to figure out which bone does what, you can turn all the visual noise off, pick the bone you want, and continue animating with a clean viewport. Related animation. When you're working with multiple characters, objects, or both, it can get super confusing trying to manage all that animation, especially if it's interacting. For example, this scene has three different main armatures being animated, the man, the sheep, and the prop. But they're all technically a part of one animation. They're interacting with one another, and it's kind of hard to look at this and think, oh yeah, that's three animations. What if you could just tell Blender, hey, these animations are related and group them into one animation. These are just a few pieces of the overall project, but on top of all that, they're also developing animation level constraints, editable motion paths in the viewport, ghost custom bone, animation, all by 2025. To put it simply, that is impossible. You'd need an army of developers and way more time to get this done. So instead of doing all this amazing work, they put it on pause and started to work on a secret project called Project Baklava. The announcements they made in relation to this are massive. It's a completely new system for animating that's going to essentially change how we animate in Blender forever. If I want to animate literally anything in Blender right now, the workflow gets super confusing. Let me show you what I mean. I've got my main character here. Once I begin animation, my character gets strips. These strips hold actions, and these actions hold my animation. It's pretty easy to follow, but I forgot to mention one thing. Strips are hidden away in an entirely different section of Blender called the Non-Linear Animation Editor. It's an old legacy system, and trying to build complex animation with more than one strip, it's kind of a nightmare. <laughs> This is fine for super simple characters like Smeef. One strip, one action, one animation. But you're never really just animating one character. You're also animating materials, lighting, props, objects, which you guessed it, also have their own actions. So what's the solution? The whole goal of this new animation system at its core is to just make animation simple. So what if instead of this old clanky workflow, 
we had a streamlined, polished system. One that lets you hold all your animation data in one block and separate them into layers. Layers are simple to understand and provide a ton of potential for the animation workflow. For example, you could have a rough block out layer and a polishing layer. If you want to go backwards or forwards, you can toggle the visibility. And once you're happy with the results, you can just close the layers underneath your main character layer. Not only that, but since these are layers, it's going to allow us to do some really cool things like just solo out the facial animation layer, work on it, and then bring everything back. Or maybe you want to just make a sequence of events like a run cycle that transitions to a jump. Or maybe you just want to add simple rotation on top of your existing animation. All of this can be done with mix layers, adding, replacing, or mixing different animations on top of your base animation. There's so much potential for this, and I honestly can't wait for them to implement it. But the main problem is trying to figure out how to make the one data block a reality. Currently, as Dr. Sebrin said himself, the action is just a dumb bag of F-curves. I love that statement. It's a simple data block, and it doesn't really do anything other than hold your animation. So before layered animation can even exist, they need to solve this problem. And they kind of did with slotted actions. This is huge, but let me show you what I mean. Generally, an action is something an object subscribes to. So this bouncing ball can also be a bouncing monkey or a bouncing cube. All three of these objects are using the same action. They all hit subscribe. The problem is that's the only thing they can do. If I try to change anything about this animation, all three objects are going to follow suit. Do you see the problem? You can't make separate animations inside the same action. Until now. I don't think you understand how big of a deal this is, so check this out. This animation is from my class Motion Magic on Skillshare, who's sponsoring this video. You already know about Skillshare. They've got thousands of career-focused classes on things like photography, cooking, and Blender. But check this out. Look how many objects are in this animation. There's the empty controller, the base of the cup, the inside of the cup, the bottle cap. The... What's essentially one animation is split into five different parts, and each part is individually subscribed to their own action. It's a mess. By the way, this animation is by no means advanced. So if you want to learn something like this, you can. Everything about this animation I teach in my class, Motion Magic. I show you animation fundamentals, walk you through my process of animating, and by the end of it, you get this awesome looping animation and the principles to apply it to anything. So now we know the problem, let's fix it. I'm gonna create one main action called cup animation. Every object here is gonna to subscribe to that action so they all follow the same animation. But now there's a new button that I can press called slots. I can create literally as many slots as I want inside this action and assign them accordingly. This is amazing. Everything in this Blender file, including the lights and materials are all being animated by one action. Genius. By the time you're watching this, my class Motion Magic will be out. And the best part is, it's free. So if you want to level up your animation skills, click the link below. The first 500 people to click that link will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. It's literally free. Click that link and thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Slotted actions are incredible and they're such a great building block for the overall layered animation project. But now I just want to talk about the future of Blender and what they plan on adding because it gets kind of wacky in a good way. <laughs> Remember the bone picker? Well, they want this to encompass not just bones, but essentially anything and everything in Blender. And they're calling this the mini map. From what I understand, this is gonna act like a master controller, kind of like a real video game mini map where you can set up controls and use it as a command center, but for Blender. I'm super interested to see how this one develops. Of course, there's rigging nodes, but on top of that, there's also animation level constraints. This one's interesting because animation constraints let you do highly complex stuff like this. 
There's so much going on, and a ton of constraints are used in this shot alone for the pushing and pulling of objects. But the problem is, these constraints don't attach to the rig. So when you open this up in the lighting file, the animation might have changed slightly, and you'll have to remember to manually update these constraints. It's very messy. What if instead of that, it was literally baked into the animation? So the action would carry the data across files and just be congruent throughout the whole production pipeline. Amazing. Now, look, I know I hype this stuff up a lot, but genuinely, I don't think enough people see this on the day, let alone at home. So if you've yet to check out this animation talk, please go check it out. It's a great watch. These updates are so exciting and it's going to make animation more and more accessible to everyday people. And I for one cannot wait to play with them. But while we wait, there's one massive problem I see a lot of beginners make when starting out with Blender. And if you'd like to fix that, you'll want to watch this video right here.